What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 13. We start today's episode off as you can see with a look at the league table, 6 games to go in the Premier League right now, 2 points clear of the bottom 3 but with the worst goal difference record in division owing primarily to our struggles in front of goal this season. On the back of back-to-back -back draws against West Ham, the heartbreaking draw where we were seconds away from a huge win and then the goalless draw at Vicarage Road as well. Now taking on Sean Dyches Burnley in 18th place, who if they were to win this game, would exit the drop zone. But Ricky J. Jones, 15 minutes in, has other plans. Hurdles to corner flag, and we take the early lead in a massive relegation six-pointer. Lose this game, and we are in the bottom three. Burnley deep from us, and we are going in to the relegation zone. But win it, and we go five points clear with five games to go. The pressure, the stakes, absolutely monumental. And Sean Pratt, what a tackle by the kid at the academy. 35 minutes in, her nanny running through one-on-one. -on -one, and Sean, the 17-year-old, gets back, makes an incredible challenge and keeps us leading by a goal. But Burnley needed a response. They'd really woken up after the early goal 15 minutes in. And right before halftime, when I talked about it, AI strikes from range, they're very OP this year, Roberto Gagliardini, the Italian, on loan here at Turf Moor with an absolute belt, a bit of a legend in my brief, short-lived Fulham FM save last year, bangs one in from range and gives Burnley a leveller, so Burnley back on level terms, it's 1-1 heading into the dressing room and three minutes after the restart, aiming to get back in front, Pope makes the save but the silver turns in the rebound and gives us our lead back right after the break. So a goal for either side, either side of half time. Josh De Silva turning in Nick Pope's save on Ryan Niambe, putting us back in front and restoring our lead. Now I knew this was going to be a cracker here at the community stadium with so much at stake for both teams and it was certainly looking that way. Right after the restart, Burnley testing Ray, a good save there, keeping it at 2-1 as we still led by a goal. And a couple of minutes after that from a corner, whipped into the centre, Rico Henry controls on the chest and he is away down that left hand side. We know he's got the pace, but he's a quick one to with Brian and Buemo. The ball's going out of Play, stretches the leg, keeps it in, finds Tony to make it 3-1, give us the two-goal cushion. And we lead Burnley by three goals to all two quick goals in the second half. But that run by Rico Henry, Tony gets the plaudits for the finish. But the run by Henry, the awareness from Buemo to give it straight back to him. Storm down left hand side, keeping the ball in play. And then playing an incredible first time through ball was exceptional. Brent for three. Burnley won, but the game was not done. 18 minutes to go. The former Robin, Josh Brownhill, makes it 3-2. Runs to Sean Dyche to celebrate. It's not over yet. And then in stoppage time. In stoppage time. Leading by a goal. Deja vu. Gagliardini. Gomez rare comes out. He's beaten Brownhill. Blocked on the line by Method and Proud with the block. And that would do it. Oh my god. My heart was racing more than when my crush accidentally touched my leg. 3-2, final score, Brentford win at the Community Stadium, and look at the fist bump at full time, the Scarves raised three straight games without a defeat against three of the teams below us in the table, and speaking of three, three goals to two was the final score for the three points, oh my goodness, what a finale, what a finish, Chris Meffin with the block on the line, with the goal gaping, and then Sean Pratt with the massive tackle, with the ball, what, like three, four yards from goal, as Rea claimed the rebound, and that would do it, my goodness, gracious me, and there you go, that win moves us up to 13th place in the table, we're now 5 points clear of the bottom 3, I have to say, whilst it's far from over, destiny is certainly in our own hands now, come on Brentford, so for the following game, on today's episode, second one of 4, now taking on Spurs here, Tottenham Hotspur coming to take us on 
at the community stadium and heading into this game against Nuno's side here. I felt really, really optimistic after no losses in our last three games and a big win there. We had the first couple of chances of the game as well, but Hugo Lloris made an incredible save. I'm not sure which one was better. First and I know than Tony, and then the header from the corner, flicking onto the crossbar. But I was really brave in the first half, not containing, not looking to break, but instead going at Spurs and 10 minutes before the break, we would get the breakthrough and the reward for being brave as well. Tony holds the ball up, spots Jensen coming forward and the Danish midfielder bangs it in to give us a shock lead against Nuno's side. We only had one scalp in the entire save so far that came against Chelsea here at the community stadium. And I was thinking this could be our second, you know. We lead, we lead Spurs by a goal to nil and we're full value for it. Unfortunately, just five minutes later, the lead was gone and that dream was looking dead. Yeah, Luis Muriel turned Turns his man and then bangs one in near post to give Spurs the equaliser right before half time. So Brentford won, Spurs won, but again five minutes after that, still tied at 1-1. We were still being really brave, not phased by Spurs' equaliser and going for more goals. And as Wissa finds Tony was playing support striker in this game, rolls out towards Dominic Thompson, into Tony, into Jakobsen, and oh my goodness gracious me. You know, I've mentioned on Twitter to start this FIFA year off that first and second touches at times can be absolutely horrific. But Sebastian Jakobsen proved the opposite second goal of the season for our young Danish attacker midfielder at the academy. And that was incredible. Tony fizzes the ball into his feet. Quick little first touch and swivel on the 180. And then the finish pass, Lloris. And Brentford lead again. Second time in the game, we lead Spurs. And we're in front heading in to the dressing room. And I was thinking, okay, here we go. This could be four games without a defeat. And back-to-back -back massive victories here at the community stadium. So 2-1, but in the second half, Spurs were like, absolutely not, lads. That's not going to happen. We're going for the title this year. We're not letting you have this win. Rare makes a great save early in the second half. And oh, this was so frustrating. 20 minutes to go. Muriel bags his brace. I thought that Rea had made an incredible save, not for the first time this season. Gets a strong hand on it, but can only push it against the post. And that ball seems to trickle over the line in slow motion. Spurs for the second time in the game. Battle back from a goal down to make it 2-2. And that was how the game would finish. I have to say, opportunity missed. I felt as though we probably should have won this game. Maybe a draw was the right result. But hey, listen, it's Spurs. They're going for the title this year. I'm going to take it. Yes, we threw away a lead on two separate occasions. But I'm taking the point. That's a decent result right there against Spurs. It just scratched that. What am I saying? Decent result. That's a really good result against Tottenham Hotspur. And now we've got 38 points on the board with four games to go. And as we know, the magic points total in the Premier League is 40. Get to 40 and practically every single season you're going to be safe. That will be enough for you to survive in the Premier League. We're one win away in our remaining four from getting us over the 40 point mark. So for the Third and final game of today's episode, final one of April, Manchester United, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's side here, going for the title themselves at Old Trafford, knowing this would be an incredibly difficult game despite four games without a defeat, and unfortunately early on to the game, tried to clear the ball here after Ronaldo's first shot was saved by David Rare, gave it straight back to the Portuguese legend, who turns in from close range. Red Devils in front, then eight minutes after the restart, they would double it. Donny van der Beek on the pitch, and heading in their second goal of the game. Actually, now was an own goal from Jensen, that one as well. Don't know how he failed to get the ball off the line there. I was tapping circle, trying to get it clear, but instead could only turn it into his own goal. Manchester United 2, Brentford 0, but to be honest here, wasn't really in the game much whatsoever. Got one chance in the match, that was for Tony. His header easily saved by the Gea, and that would do it. Ronaldo and an own goal from Jensen. See the Red Devils get the win. Our undefeated run ends after four games. Not really much of a surprise. We faced the Red Devils three times this season, and now lost to them each time. So that will do it then for April. There are Currently, three games to go in the season for Brentford. West Ham have a game in hand. They've got 32. We've got 38. So they're six points behind. Again, but they've got the game in hand. They win that and they cut it to three as Burnley are now outside the bottom three in 17th. So it's far from over. A really decent streak. Just one loss in five. That coming at Old Trafford. But it's still not done yet. Survival is on the line. And we're not over the hurdle just yet. We're almost there. And I would say just one win in our final three games. Against Southampton. Everton away. Our final away day at Goodison Park. And also Leeds at home on the final game of the season. And I would say that will be enough. One win in our final three. Because of the amount of teams that are below us on the table right now. And that's 
should do it. But getting it is another matter because when the pressure is on, you best believe this season I've bottled, I've choked, and I've really, really struggled to hold my nerve. So for the first game of May, the first of the final three, it's the penultimate home game of the year, Community Stadium. The scarves are raised pre-kickoff because we know win this game, we're at 41 points, and surely that will be enough. First half an hour, very nervy. I didn't really want to attack too much. I was feeling incredibly nervous. I was just trying to keep holding the ball for the most part. But as Niambe fizzing across the back stick, Vissa turns it in. But the celebration's incredibly short-lived. He spots the assistant on the near side with his flag raised. And to be fair, I didn't even show the replay because he was a mile offside and the right decision. So in the second half, still tied at 0-0. I was thinking, would I take a point in this game? Put us to 39 with just two games to go? Or do we go for the win? Well, Ivan Tony. Seven minutes after the restart, said Gaffer, Fortune favours the brave. And the captain, the legend, the shocker, puts us in front against Ralph Hassan at side. And what a surprise it comes from a bullet header. I tell you guys right now, if you're using Brentford or if you sign Ivan Tony, you've got to utilise his aerial strength, man. He wins most of the aerial duels. He's got the power header trait. This guy is unstoppable when you float the crosses in. 14 goals in 36 matches. He's our top scorer by some distance, and he heads in one of the most important goals of the season. Brentford 1, Southampton 0, and 66 minutes into the game, the celebrations ringing around West London after a brilliant run by Ethan Pinnock, our centre-half. This is in the middle, and this goal is not chalked off. Bangs it in, 2-0 Brentford, surely... We're going to win, and surely we're going to be safe, but with 20 minutes to go. Oh my goodness gracious me, the nerves, the absolute nerves at this point. Southampton were playing a high-press game, and I was struggling like crazy. I was really beginning to show. I didn't just want, just want to give them the ball back and just give them chances. I was trying to just keep hold of the ball, gifted them a goal for John Joe Shelby. They halved the deficit, and in stoppage time, Rico Harry makes a massive, massive challenge. You get the ball away, we're on the break, the breaking bees. Tony with Jan Bednarek to beat. Beats him with the ball roll, steps round, finds a gap, goes through the middle, beats Carl Walker Peters, and hits it straight at the goalkeeper. It would have wrapped the points up, but it did not matter. It did not matter. Brentford win. Brentford surely survive. Huge return to winning ways. Brentford 2. Southampton won in an absolute thriller of a game, like all of the final games of the season have been. But that should do it. Now, 2-1 the final score, I felt we deserved the win, and courtesy of Vissa and Tony, Brentford have got over the 40 point mark and have 41 points. Two games to go, and it is basically all over. If you're playing devil's advocate, mathematically we're not safe just yet, Burnley could still do it if they win both, and all the teams below us get the wins as well. But surely, surely with just one point required, Brentford are going to be safe. But that went in today's episode of Korea, guys. Big thank you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you haven't, please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the season finale of Korea Mode, where just one point is required to stay in the Premier League very soon.